a jet so fast it could cross America in 64 minutes. Over 4,000 missiles fired at it, zero hits, zero losses. This machine could literally outrun death itself at 2,400 miles per hour. The Russians called it the impossible aircraft. The Americans called it the Blackbird. But here's what nobody tells you. They threw it away. Not because it was old, not because it was broken, but because of politics, greed, and one Air Force general's personal vendetta. Today, you'll discover the most shocking military mistake in American history. In 1986, this aircraft did something that should have been impossible. Flying over Libya at 80,000 feet, Russian surface-to-air missiles screamed toward it at Mach 5. The pilot's response? He pushed the throttle forward and simply flew faster. The aircraft hit Mach 3.5, nearly 2,400 miles per hour. Those million-dollar missiles couldn't even keep up. This wasn't science fiction. This was American engineering at its finest. The SR-71 Blackbird had just proven that speed truly was the ultimate defense. But within four years, this incredible machine would be grounded forever. If you believe America should never retire its most advanced weapons, type yes in the comments below and support this by sharing your thoughts about our military's incredible achievements. The numbers alone tell an incredible story. The SR-71 Blackbird wasn't just fast, it was impossibly fast. While commercial jets cruise at 500 miles per hour, the Blackbird cruised at over 2,200 miles per hour. That's three times the speed of sound, every single day. But here's what makes it truly remarkable. Most aircraft that reach these speeds can only do it for minutes before their engines literally melt. The Russian MiG-25 could hit Mach 3.2, but only for a few minutes, and afterward, the entire engine was destroyed. The Blackbird could maintain Mach 3.2 for hours, complete its mission, land safely, and be ready to fly again the next morning. The secret was its incredible Pratt and Whitney J-58 engine. These weren't just jet engines, they were engineering miracle. At high speed, they worked more like rocket engines, gulping over 100,000 cubic feet of air every second. The aircraft was so advanced that it leaked fuel on the ground because the metal panels were designed to expand at high temperature, sealing perfectly only when screaming through the sky at maximum speed. This machine could survey 100,000 square miles of enemy territory in just one hour. From 85,000 feet up, it could photograph a license plate on a car below. The crew needed special pressure suits just like astronauts because they were flying at the edge of space itself. Here's something that will amaze you about American military excellence. Over its entire service life, the SR-71 faced over 4,000 surface-to-air missiles from the most advanced Soviet systems, from the deadliest air defenses ever built. The result? Not a single hit, not one loss to enemy fire. Zero. The Blackbird's defense strategy was beautifully simple. When radar operators detected incoming missiles, the pilot didn't turn didn't dive, didn't deploy flares. He accelerated. The aircraft would simply outrun the threat. Imagine missiles designed to travel at Mach 4, chasing a target moving at Mach 3.5 at 85,000 feet. By the time those missiles reached the Blackbird's altitude, it was already dozens of miles away. Swedish pilots once claimed they could lock onto the SR-71 during Baltic Sea missions. They succeeded 51 times out of 322 attempts. But here's the catch. They needed the Blackbird to fly in a perfectly straight line. The moment it changed course even slightly, their missiles became useless. That's the difference between theory and reality in aerial combat. This aircraft served America through the most dangerous years of the Cold War. It photographed Soviet missile sites during the Cuban Missile Crisis. It tracked enemy movements during the Yom Kippur War. It provided crucial intelligence during the Israeli invasion of Lebanon. When America needed eyes in the most dangerous places on Earth, the Blackbird answered the call. But the most incredible mission happened over Libya in 1986. American forces had just bombed Tripoli in retaliation for terrorist attacks. Satellites couldn't provide immediate battle damage assessment. The Blackbird was sent in to photograph the results. Libya's newest Russian missiles streaked toward it. The pilot's response became legendary. He pushed past the aircraft's official limits, hitting Mach 3.5, and outran every single threat. Now comes the part that will anger every American who loves our military. The SR-71 wasn't retired because it was outdated. It wasn't retired because of budget cuts. According to Ben Rich, the former director of Lockheed Skunk Works, the same team that built this masterpiece, the Blackbird was killed by one man's political ambition. Air Force Chief of Staff General Larry Welch wanted funding for the B-2 bomber program. 
the SR-71's annual budget stood in his way. So he launched what Rich called a one-man campaign on Capitol Hill to kill the program entirely. This wasn't about military necessity. This was about money and politics. Here's what makes this betrayal even worse. The Air Force's own testimony revealed the truth. They admitted that the money used to operate the SR-71 fleet could run two tactical fighter wings, but they left out crucial detail. Those fighter wings couldn't fly at 85,000 feet. They couldn't outrun missiles. They couldn't photograph enemy territory without being shot down. The comparison was completely meaningless. The Strategic Air Command never wanted the Blackbird. SAC's mission was dropping bombs, not reconnaissance. They saw the SR-71 as competing for resources that could go to their bombers. They viewed it as an awkward fit that didn't contribute to their image. Meanwhile, this awkward fit was providing intelligence that kept America safe during the most dangerous period in human history. The final insult came during the aircraft's retirement ceremony. As the last SR-71 made its final flight in 1990, it set four new speed records on its way to the museum. This wasn't a tired, outdated aircraft limping into retirement. This was America's most advanced reconnaissance platform still breaking records being thrown away at the peak of its capabilities. The consequences of this decision became clear almost immediately. When Operation Desert Storm began in 1991, field commanders desperately needed the kind of real-time intelligence only the Blackbird could provide. Satellites are predictable. Enemies know when they're coming. Drones are slow and vulnerable. The SR-71 was the only platform that could penetrate defended airspace gather critical intelligence, and return safely. Senator John Glenn, a genuine American hero and former astronaut, spoke in Congress about this disaster. He called the SR-71's retirement a grave mistake that could place our nation at a serious disadvantage in the event of a future crisis. This wasn't political rhetoric. This was a warning from one of America's most respected military figures. The regret was so immediate that Congress tried to fix the mistake. In 1994, they authorized funding to bring three SR-71s back into service, but the damage was already done. The Air Force, the same organization that had killed the program, now dragged its feet on reactivation. They had not budgeted for the aircraft. They had dismantled the support structure. They had scattered the expert crews. The reactivation became a half-hearted effort. The Air Force claimed specific funding hadn't been authorized. Congress reauthorized the funds. President Clinton tried to use his line item veto to cancel the allocation. The Supreme Court ruled the line item veto unconstitutional. Through all this political fighting, America's enemies were advancing their air defense systems, making the eventual return of high-speed reconnaissance even more critical. By 1998, the bureaucratic warfare was over. The SR-71 was permanently retired. NASA flew the last missions until 1999 using the aircraft for research that advanced American aviation technology. When that final flight touched down, America lost a capability it has never fully replaced. The numbers reveal the true cost of this decision. The SR-71 program cost about $300 million annually to operate. That sounds like a lot until you realize what America lost. Modern satellite programs cost billions. The replacement systems the Air Force promised never materialized or failed in development. The famous Aurora Project, rumored to be the Blackbird's successor, either doesn't exist or never became operational. Today's reconnaissance relies heavily on satellites and drones. Satellites are predictable and vulnerable to anti-satellite weapons. Drones are slow and easily shot down in defended airspace. Neither can provide the rapid response penetration capability, and survivability that the SR-71 offered. Modern air defense systems have evolved dramatically since the 1990s. Russian S-400 missiles can engage targets at longer ranges and higher speeds than the systems the Blackbird routinely defeated. Chinese air defenses have advanced beyond recognition. The need for a platform that can penetrate these defenses, gather intelligence, and escape safely has never been greater. The SR-71's retirement left a gap in American military capability that persists today. When intelligence is needed from the most dangerous places on Earth, America now has limited options. We can risk slow-moving drones that might be shot down. We can wait for satellites that pass over on predictable schedules. Or we can risk the lives of pilots in conventional aircraft that can't match the Blackbird's speed and altitude. But here's where American ingenuity shines through. Our military leaders and defense contractors learned from this mistake. The evidence suggests they're working to restore and exceed. 
the capabilities we lost. The story doesn't end with failure. It ends with American determination to reclaim our technological superiority. Lockheed Martin Skunk Works, the same legendary team that created the original Blackbird, has been working on something extraordinary. The SR-72, nicknamed Son of Blackbird, represents everything the original aircraft was and more. This new aircraft won't just match the SR-71's Mach 3.2 speed. Early reports suggest it will fly at Mach 6, nearly 4,600 miles per hour. That's fast enough to cross the entire continental United States in 30 minutes. It will be unmanned, removing the risk to American pilots while enabling maneuvers that no human could survive. The evidence suggests this program is real and advancing rapidly. Lockheed Martin has invested over $335 million of their own money since 2022. They've opened new production facilities designed specifically for advanced aircraft manufacturing. They've contracted for new landing gear systems, something you only do for production aircraft, not test vehicles. Recent reports indicate a prototype could fly by 2025 with operational capability by 2030. This timeline suggests the program is already well advanced. The SR-72 will restore America's ability to penetrate any airspace, gather critical intelligence, and return safely. It will also carry hypersonic strike weapons, adding an offensive capability the original Blackbird never had. The collaboration with Top Gun. Maverick wasn't just entertainment. Lockheed Martin worked directly with filmmakers to design the Dark Star aircraft featured in the movie. After the film's success, they posted cryptic messages suggesting that faster aircraft exist but remain unacknowledged. This is an accident. It's strategic communication about American capabilities. The lesson of the SR-71's retirement has been learned. You don't discard America's most advanced weapons because of politics or budget concerns. You don't trust that replacement systems will automatically appear when needed. And you don't leave capability gaps that enemies can exploit. American military superiority depends on maintaining technological advantages like the Blackbird represented. Our service members deserve the best equipment possible. Our enemies need to know that American engineering can create machines they cannot match or defeat. The SR-71 story is ultimately about American excellence triumphing over bureaucratic failure. It's about learning from mistakes and building something even better. Most importantly, it's about never again retiring our most advanced capabilities because of politics. The Blackbird may be gone, but its spirit lives on in every American engineer and pilot working to keep our nation safe. The son of Blackbird is coming, and it will ensure that American reconnaissance aircraft once again rule the skies at speeds our enemies cannot match. That's the real story of the jet so fast it could outrun any missile, and why America will never make that retirement mistake again. If this incredible story of American ingenuity inspired you, make sure to like this video and subscribe for more amazing military stories that showcase our forces' incredible achievements.